Hey, what's up guys? Clock here, and today I'm bringing you another 3v3 video of my wrestler Drude playing with Killer Cam Fit, of course, as always. And in these games, I'm just going to be doing what I normally do in my other videos, basically just explaining my thought process, what you should be looking out for as a wrestler Druid, and all those good things. So, let's go ahead and get into the first game. For the first game, we're facing Holy Paladin, Mage, and Warrior. Um, pretty much everyone here has CC that you have to watch out for, so watch your positioning very carefully. They're, the team is always going to try to play play on top of you you got to always keep moving around that is the best thing i could recommend and be mostly watching out for the pally and the the mage basically you want to watch out for the pally is the hodge and when he wants a hodge you can tell by he's going to do two things to get that hodge off he's going to mount up and usually use freedom on himself to get that hodge on you so be very wary of that and when he comes into hodge make sure you're just shape shifted uh that is because the mage is going to try to pull you out of that and uh, if they do that they're going to do some serious damage so again in between times, you're not doing anything. When you're hotting up people and they're topped off and there's nothing else to do, go ahead and shapeshift because, again, they're going to do something to try to get you into a uh, poly. That is, that's pretty much what this comp revolves around, getting kills, is around that poly. So let's go ahead and start it off. So right here, right at the bat, as you can see, I'm going to go for a root on the warrior just to kind of hinder him and make it so my team can get on their mage really easily. As you can see, he feared me, and exactly what does the mage do? He's going to try to pull me out of that. So he blinks out in the open, and that is his first thing he wants to do is try to get that poly. So as you can see, I actually have enough time because I am running relentless. Uh, since I am running relentless, it doesn't give him enough time to uh, get a poly on me. So if I was running um, adapt, it would have got me out of fear. If I was running trinket, I would have just gotten poly. So I would have put as far behind. Um, again, I like running relentless against mages, really. I think it really helps out a lot. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of people running adept, that's fine. But again, it's kind of like what you prefer. And I, I noticed this actually works for me the best. Again, right here, I'm actually going to get Hodge. Here's exactly what I was talking about. Here comes the Paladin. He mounted up. You can expect a Hodge. One thing you can notice is I'm in um, I'm in travel form right now. So the only way that Pally could, or excuse me, the Mage could get CC on me is by doing his Ring of Frost, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, my 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 team doesn't know not to kick those Pallys. Uh, it's all about communication. Um, I try to let him know when I need him to kick it, but to kick the Pally, so that left my Mage easily open for a uh, Ring of Frost, so they couldn't do anything about that. Again, it's just all about communication. So I get a full Ring of Frost, but again, we we have a lot of pressure right now as you can see we get sack from the pally my shaman pops wall um so things aren't looking too bad uh it looks like we're still a little bit ahead of the lead uh the only thing that they have is left is one more sack from the pally and a block and a bop keep that in mind but uh, since i do have a um shaman on my team you could just easily purge it as you can see, a lot of times the mage will go ahead and spam poly on my targets to even get me to come out to uh, poly me. So what happens a lot is he might spam poly on my warrior, and the moment I come out, he'll put a poly on me because I have to come out to dispel my teammate. Uh, a lot of times you'll see mages do that, and I think he actually tries to do that to me here this game. Uh, as you can see, I pop wall onto my shaman because he's taking a big D. And right here, I noticed the pounds behind pillar, so I'm able to get an easy cyclone off of it. So that's exactly what I do. I come here to hard cast a, uh, a heal. I get locked out. It's okay. Again, I go back into my travel form. I'm not going to just sit there and, you know, be out of form. Don't always be in form against uh, a mage, especially a team like this when they could just stun you and pull you out. So always try to keep that in mind. See, right here, they, they mess up because they stunned me again while I'm in form, making it so the mage can't get any CC on me. That's pretty much me outplaying them right there. You can do a lot of things as a Drew to outplay the opposing team, and that's why I love this class. Again, here comes a DR Hodge. It was like one point something second cast. And just because of that, this mage is at able to get a poly. It kind of sucks because I was outplaying him for so long, and the moment I come out, just for that heal, because I need to, he's getting rid ridiculously low. I get Hodge, a third Hodge DR for one point something second cast, which is actually ridiculous. But again, uh, looks like we're kind of fine. Here's one mistake I do. As you can see, I already had three hots. Uh, and since he's low, I went and did my overgrowth right here is my ability. I did overgrowth. And the problem is with that, the mage can spell steal all that instantly because it's one ability. And uh, that actually is what makes me 
That's actually what hurts me. I should have just kept those three haunts on and just kept healing, trying to heal through it. But I screwed myself over since I did over regrowth. And I honestly, I got poly right there again. I should have just been morphed. Uh, I got blood off silence. So again, I did, in a way, I got outplayed. But it's so, it's such a small, minor outplay kind of thing. It, 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 but it makes a difference. And it, it's, it's honestly, the things that you see here that I'm explaining is literally top tier players do and shit. This is what separates the good from bad players. Um, it, it's very hard to do, guys. Like, even pros and rank ones kind of mess it up because sometimes they're so minor, but they make such a huge difference. And it causes games. Like, that, that's what's going to cause this game is I did overgrowth and he spell stole everything. So now I uh, I had to put hots on him. It's going to waste global cooldowns. And then I have to try to juke the mage's uh, hard cast because, or the mage's uh, CS because I had the hard cast. There's no way my hot's gonna be able to keep him up from this point. So I end up actually we end up losing. Right now, here's another bad thing I could say. My team, as you notice, my team went back here. Um, when teammates seem to die, they like to run towards you. You need to communicate with your teammates and tell them to get the fuck away from you because, as you could see, the mage was able to do his uh, fires dragons. He got a triple dragon's breath on us. I got blood of silence, and I think two of them are. Blood off, so I could have got double blood off sounds. It actually makes it really difficult on your healer if your team pulls back, unless like it's a spellcaster team. But since they're like really hardcore up in your face kind of team, your team needs to play away from you so that you're at a safe distance and you don't have to worry about CC. And uh, when the team does try to CC you, you'll be able to notice it way easier because if the team's out there and you're back here, the moment they pull over here, you're gonna bet your ass that they're gonna try to sweet, uh, CC you. So always try to look out for that. Again, um, my shaman died. You end up losing. For the second game, we're facing all rank ones, and it's Arms Warrior and a Mist Weaver and a Handsmith Shaman. Basically a mirror, but the only difference is I'm a Rest of Druid. Their healer is a Mist Weaver. So they got a kind of an advantage in the terms that their healer can um, get CC on me with making my job really hard to get CC on him. So uh, honestly, their cop is a little bit better just because their heals is different. And um, the only uh, only difference is I can get some CC on that warrior, but again, it's going to be very hard because I have to deal with wind shears and all that stuff. And if I come in, I'm going to obviously be closer to their Miss Weaver, who could just do one leap and sat me, and then uh, I can get CC'd from there pretty much. And it's going to be very bad. So as you can see, I'm going to try to play back as far as possible. Right now, right off the bat, this is a rank one team. This is very bad. He's making it very obvious that he wants to get a fear on me because this warrior just runs by my two teammates. So it's pretty clear the warrior's going to do something to me so what i try to do is i try to pretty much just los him the whole time as you can see he kind of like faked he was going to go my teammates but he came back uh and i noticed it and i just you know look at that he wasted his time that's totally fine by me uh if anything if he was ever going to get close to me i could have vortexed it and blinked away um but if i did that it would make it very easy for the monk to come to me and sat me um, but again, it, you want to try to avoid as much CC as possible. As you can see, they're going really hard right now, right off the bat. He's got MS, so I go ahead and pop Thorns, uh, try to negate some damage. I go ahead and pop Iron Bark a little bit late. Um, they did this damage really, really fast. Maybe within about two or three globals, they got him down that low. So again, it's my fault. I should have Iron Barked him way earlier. But since I do Iron Bark it, I'm telling my Shaman not to pop his wall because if he pops his wall, we're not going to have anything for the second rotation that they do go him. We're going to be screwed during the second rotation, as I was saying. I vortex them too because I know the warrior is going to try to come CC me, and I just want to be able to top off my Shaman as much as possible. So again, I'm communicating with my Shaman. Do not pop wall. Do not pop wall. Have faith in me. Um, again, as you can see, uh, the monk was coming towards me. My warrior was able to get a fear on him. I think this monk sits it, and then he's going to come and try to get some CC on me. Again, my shaman still has his wall. I get feared right here. Uh, we're looking pretty good. Here comes the monk. The monk, uh, okay, right there, as you can see, the monk was starting to head towards me, but since... Um, but since his teammates are dying, his warrior's at like 30, the shaman's at 40, he ended up backing off because I would have been able to CC him and he would have been in a lot more in trouble than I would be um, just because his teammates are really low and all my teammates are really high. Um, right here, maybe what I could do, I could go for some CC on that warrior. But again, if I do do that, I'm going to be risk of getting wind shear and uh, obviously I'm going to be closer to that monk for CC on me. So it's really uh, like this, like when you face mirrors, it's honestly games between cooldowns and your healers, how good your healers are. And whoever the opposing healer is, it, it's normally they're going to be better than they're going to win um, unless they're playing with a Dis Priest. I do not recommend this comp playing with a Dis Priest. Absolutely horrible. As you can see, the Shaman actually came close to me 
and he actually gets a um, he gets a nature lock on me. And if right here, I don't know if you guys can see that in the bottom right, I, it shows all my casts that I try to uh, I try to cast. It shows my spells that I do, all my GCDs. And uh, right here, again, they're going very hard. Uh, they get MS, and they're doing some big damage. Uh, my Shaman could maybe pop War right here, but the difference is he his wall is like, if I make him pop his wall, he's not going to do any damage, and they're just going to swap onto my Warrior. So we're, we're going to save it for the very last moment. And as you can see, the Monk is trying to get some CC on me. Um, I noticed this, and I actually I try to blink away. I try to blink away, but you know it just, it was just too fast. Um, I get out of sap. I bash him. He uh, trinkets it, and I actually try to blink away. I think still. Yeah, I still tried to. Couldn't do it. Um, so we're under a lot of pressure. And right here, I'm communicating with my uh, shaman to not wall. Uh, we have commanding, and I was just, you know, the my shaman had faith in me uh, that I was able to pop him off. And I was telling him not to wall. I was telling him not to wall. And I think right here, when right here, I had told him just wall but it was a little bit too late because he did get globaled uh, like that was within a second he was at like 25 percent health and execute just took him down no problem so again don't be afraid to use your cooldowns at times especially when they use all their cc um like they had nothing else for me if we would have lived right there we probably would have been able to get the kill on their shaman because their shaman already popped a wall and i think i already saw bubble so we would have won the next uh the next cc rotation onto the shaman for sure we were definitely in lead but um i was just being too gritty with our cooldowns and i told my shaman not to pop his cooldowns and again it just made us lose and as you can see they are very quick games especially at high ratings um you'll notice a lot of quick games and it's very in depth a lot of times and i actually like these games because it's um you know i can go over a lot more and again i hope you guys enjoyed this video if so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as always guys get out there and pound some nubs